Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Symbio Cannabis Podcast. Uh, we got a good one today. We're going to talk about what does it take to build a seven-figure brand. And Aaron is back again as usual. What's up, Aaron? How you doing today? I'm doing good, man. I'm excited. This is a fun topic and uh, one that I, uh, I love talking about and helping other people achieve. Yeah, me too, man. And, and obviously, uh, for those that don't know, me and Aaron have both built seven and eight-figure companies. Um, and so we've been a part of those journeys with different companies that we've helped launch over the years. And so we know what it takes to get from zero to an eight figure brand. And, and so we'll go over, uh, let's go over getting to seven figures first, and then maybe next time we'll talk about eight figures. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and you know, when we talk about seven figures, I mentioned this earlier, but the, the key, the key with seven figures is you gotta be able to make six figures and in order to make six figures, you gotta be able to make five and five, four and four, three and three, two and one. So I, you know, an easier way to say this is you have to know how to make your first sale in order to make hundreds or thousands of them. And then from there, we can kind of talk about scaling up. So I'd say let's, to introduce it, you know, first and foremost, you need a brand, you need an audience, you need uh, a brand, an audience. I, I'd start, in fact, with a product, an audience, and a brand that captures that, that so that way you can communicate it. Then an online store. Um, and, oh, and real uh, quick too, before all that, the right business foundation, setting up your uh, LLC absolutely. and S corps properly. And there's ways to save money on taxes. So really look into that. If you're going to be making seven, eight figures a year, you could save hundreds of thousands of dollars by setting up your company in the right way. So I don't want to go into absolutely. that, but there's ways to do that. So make sure you just some basic part of it is like, speak to your, uh, uh, find some lawyers who will set up an operating agreement in your company for you around two fifty five hundred dollars price point just to get started. That will help you get going. Eventually, you're going to need some some bigger guns to help you, but that will get you started. Um, and I would uh, advise consulting them. Also, accountants should be able to help you at least point you in the right direction. Um, yeah. But yeah, set that company up, get that product, get that brand, get that aud- get that audience to find that brand. Um, set up the e-commerce store. Um, do so in a way I, I recommend highly work with the right people out of the gate, find some really strong, talented designers that have built successful e-commerce companies in the past uh, and work out deals with them where you can get them to build uh, pro- uh, I, or, uh, sites for you and your branding for a reasonable cost. Um, I, you know, one of the easiest ways to build a company that's going to sell at scale is to work with people who have sold uh, companies at scale or products at scale before. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Once you got that going on, uh, you know, the next step is to make that first sale. Um, and to make that first sale, you need to identify your sales channels. Yeah, like have um, a marketing and sales plan, a detailed map, a roadmap of how you're going to achieve your marketing objectives and sales objectives, which are two different ball games. So I think there's absolutely. a necessity to have separate marketing and sales plans. And of course, being flexible within the plan because this industry changes every day. And so... You, you should have a, a detailed plan, but also be ready to, to move at any, any point and pivot. Absolutely. I find the easiest way to make those first, so I completely agree. You should have a general uh, sale, retail sales plan and a general uh, marketing and, and uh, online sales plan. I don't think you have to be as complicated. You don't have to get into your head about what does that look like? How does it work exactly? Just fit, stick with the facts. What are you trying to do? You're trying to make sales. What does that look like? What are the steps you're going to take? What works is far more valuable than what's formally accurate. Um, and so that's what I'd be <laughs> looking at. Yeah, and don't, spend second- too, too, don't spend too much time planning. I talked to a guy yesterday um, that works with a CBD brand and he said they have millions of dollars and they haven't made a sale yet because they're constantly planning and doing this and that and they're not even focused on totally. the sales. So. I'm, I'm all about coming up with the right plan. And I think that a lot of people can spend the wrong amount of time not doing the right thing. But you know, what I see constantly is people are like, Oh, I need to come up with this perfect business plan. And then they write up these, these long formal business plan that they downloaded a template on from, from online <laughs> um, or, or these long pitch decks that are based on some, something that's not relevant to their brand. And so I, I, you know, be, Spend enough time designing, but that time designing should be no more than 20% of the time. Uh, 80% of your time should be uh, delegating, deciding, or doing. Um, and, 100%. and really a lot of that is doing. Uh, and make mistakes and so, too. Don't be afraid to jump in and dive in and fail forward, however they absolutely. say it. And like my old partner, he even trademarked, he has t-shirts that say make mistakes. And he does multi, <laughs> he has multi-million dollar businesses, multiple businesses, because he doesn't, 
he's not afraid, man. He just dives yes. into stuff. And, and, and I think it's he, good. When I met that guy, he had a bed in his office. <laughs> and so sometimes <laughs> in the beginning, like of his company, and that's another note that I have here, every startup I've been a part of, I don't know about you, but in the beginning I was working 12 to 16 hours a day. Like that's just Absolutely. how it, at least the first few months while you're setting all, everything up is you're going to have to roll your sleeves up and then Absolutely automate and delegate eventually. But I think so too, man. I think hustle and systems, they're the two things that are really key to it. Um, you know, as I, I'm young still, but as, but as I've learned from wiser people, uh, you know, the sooner you can get and start implementing systems, the, the better, but yeah. there's few things that replace hard work. But if you can mix those two together, that's really the key. I try to find balance so I can sustain the hustle while also having the system. So yeah, there was a I, golfer back in the day. I forgot who it was. They were interviewing him and they're like, how are you so good? And you win all the time. And he was like, I, it's funny, the harder I work, the luckier I get. <laughs> that's good so, you know and and i know a lot i know two billionaires and they're older now but they still work man they're on the phones doing deals all day long totally. like one of them's smoking joints all day and he's on the <laughs> phone yelling at people he's got two phones and that's, that's crazy man you gotta you gotta get that momentum and just keep it going you know absolutely absolutely and i you know in, in that regard i think about isaac newton's uh first two laws of um uh, motion, I think. Uh, uh, and it's, you know, uh, first is like a, a, a inertia. You got to get something started. Um, and yeah. then uh, that thing will continue to go until it's, uh, and, and, until it's uh, either, until it's either pushed back for an opposite or equal force. So I guess my, my point with that is, um, let's get that first sale. How do you get that first sale? Well, a lot of people look at e-commerce, they think, let me invest into this huge website. Let me invest into this huge brand and this huge design. And then, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden the sales are going to come. Uh, it's not usually how it works. Usually you have to build this and then you have to create revenue streams that take time to develop. I find actually the easiest way to get those first sales is start hustling to your friends, your family, and to your colleagues, and to, your, um, uh, and to those people around you. Get some sales, get some momentum, get some inertia, which will lead to momentum um, by selling to just those people around you. And once you have that, that will give you some steam uh, in your engine that will allow you to continue and to scale that up. So I say the easiest way to get the first sale, friends and family, call them, post on Facebook, text everyone you know, tell them what you're doing, post on your social media what you're up to uh, and get those initial sales on. Uh, and those can go directly into your uh, e-commerce site that you set up. Um, and then after that, really focus on, um, in my opinion, like we talked about, have that map, that roadmap for sales and marketing. Um, and, or, you know, I, or you could do one roadmap for, or you could do one roadmap for online sales or one roadmap for offline sales. I think that's often yeah. really kind of the two most important. Um, and so I put that on there, put the friends and family as one of the first milestones. And once you get there, the next thing to be considering is what revenue channels are you most uh, are the lowest hanging fruits for you and your brand specifically. Uh, I find that a lot of people um, sometimes have a lot of social media followers and sometimes the easiest way to drive a lot of revenue or momentum for these brands is simply to start uh, optimizing by, by working with their other social media friends. So, or influencers, some influencers decide to start brands. You can work with your other influencers around you to easily get that going. Also, what do you know best? If you come from a sales history, maybe the easiest way for you to get started and build some momentum and some steam is to be looking at the retail side of the business. Um, or if you have some experience with online marketing, maybe the easiest, or advertising, maybe the easiest way is for you to start investing in some uh, digital ads. I, I have experience in digital advertising and I, and I spend most of my time when I start a new brand firing up some ads. They're the easiest and shortest way, our quickest way to get traffic yep. generated and going to your, to your product. For sure. And then on my end, when I started my brand, I, like you just mentioned, I have more of the sales, old school, belly to belly. Let me get in, in your face in person and get to know you and make the sales. So I went out, did a lot of trade shows and went to brick and mortar stores and set appointments. And we got a lot of good results that way because Absolutely. I already have that background and I was comfortable. I had to learn internet marketing from scratch. It was so totally. hard. Like the first six months, it was my friend uh, who's an internet marketer. He calls it the confusion stage. The first totally. <laughs> six months, you're just like, ah, it's so much to do. And, and there's so much out there, man. And everyone's telling and all these advice. gurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of shit advice. It up. is. Um, and so you have to wade through all the bullshit and then get to the meat and figure out what's going to work. But that's one thing. Every company is the 80, 20 rule. Like you're going to make 80% of your income off of one thing, probably like, 
for us, Absolutely. it was the trade shows. We we would get tons of sales and accounts because we were just good at it. And my wife is even, my lady, Dr. B is even better than me at a trade show. She's been doing them since 1996. So it's like, you put, her, point, man. Man, you put her in a trade show. She wrangles everybody up and she's having fun and dancing. And everybody's like, who are these people? You know? And so totally. it's just where you're naturally fit. Like if, and the, the number one people that I've spoken to in the industry so far are people that have affiliate marketing backgrounds. They come Absolutely. in and they have instant traffic, you know? I mean, they get it. And that's, and that's the key is if you can lean into what you already know how to do well, you with retail brands, me with Facebook ads, I, you know, initially, actually I started with influencer marketing and, and that's where I really got my initial traffic, which then I turned into Facebook ads and that really kind of spun it for me to really scale up. But um, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. What are you good at already? And maybe simply what you're good at is having good friends and family connections that you can reach out. Maybe you're really good at finding other people that are really good at different things, but isolate and identify what is the low hanging fruit. Start there, lean into your strength and let you build some momentum and steam into the engine. That's going to get you your first thousand sales. That's going to get your, you know, that's going to, you're going to go from one to thousand sales uh, with that main strength. Um, and then from that point, uh, I typically see the next, like, this is where people kind of get stuck. They, it's really around this point where they're generating maybe, um, you know, maybe they're generating a hundred dollars by doing friends and family or thousands of dollars by generating friends and family. And then they get to tens of thousands because they lean into something like influencers or Facebook ads. Okay. And then the next step is how do I get to that six figure company? So now we're from, you know, we're going from uh, three to four. Now we're at five. But how do we get to that six? Um, and the key on the six is you can either, lean in heavier to your strength and really optimize and scale it up. Or um, I find the, the easiest ways is to start doing um, uh, customer optimization. What things can you add to the, to the, just the existing uh, regiment that you have, whether it's increasing upsells and cross sales on your website, uh, adding email marketing to your website, um, uh, or, uh, or, or what does that look like? Or, for me, what I did personally is I, I leaned into my strength, influencer marketing for the most part, and then I introduced a secondary channel. I didn't start, I didn't say I'm going to go after all of them at once. I didn't, I set up some basic email stuff. I set up some basic conversion rate optimization stuff. And then I really focused and leaned in on, um, on what can I do to, what is the next lowest hanging fruit to drive sales? And for us, that was uh, retail sales and it was uh, Facebook ads. In order, it was actually influencer marketing, retail sales, and then uh, Facebook ads. Retail sales didn't scale us up that much, um, but it gave us a little bit more revenue, which kicked us into that six figures between influencer marketing and uh, retail sales. And then at that point, uh, we introduced Facebook ads. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Facebook ads is literally the hottest and the biggest platform when it comes to, uh, it's probably the, the biggest and most effective uh, acquisition platform online right now, uh, maybe comparable only to influencer marketing um, and Google advertising. And so I, we leaned into that and that's what really kind of helped us get from that five figures to six figures. Um, then at that point, you know, at that point, I find it to be really all about customer value optimization. How can you increase the experience for your customer? How can you do excellent customer support 100%. so they continue to come by and buy your products? How can you improve your con uh, conversion rate optimization? How can you, uh, what can you do with email or text message notifications? Can you create Facebook groups for ambassadors? These are all Messenger customer bots, value. Everything. Exactly. Yeah. These and are then, all customer value stuff. Yeah. And the way you do that though, is with the right team of people. Like I was part of a dispensary. We were doing over 15 million a year in sales and it was only because we had the best team of people, man. Everybody was so passionate. And like you said, the customer service was top notch, man. We treated our, patients like family and it, it like really showed and they always would come back to us and then we had our systems in place and we had the funding so you got to have funds to do this like absolutely bootstrapping it especially in this climate is going to be very difficult like <clears throat> i i suggest at least 150 to 200 thousand dollars to start ideally like i think it's in, possible but the, if you can get some money get some money and a lot of people put a lot of barriers to this idea of I, I can i get some money here's the thing guys people who have money are looking for ways to invest that money to make more many of them want opportunities like this and if you present it to them they'd be interested 
grow some courage and uh, and and get some and, and get some passion and express that. Uh, communicate and you can build a basic pitch deck that covers what your product is, what your secret sauce is, who who's behind this product, what your experience and success has been thus far with the with the time and energy you've invested into it, and then try raising some money. Um, I don't think it's always necessary. You can be might be you're financially independent or you have some money that you can invest from previous products you've worked on. Um, but I would suggest leaning into it and and, uh, and checking it out. And 100%. then at that point. It's really about omni-channel marketing at that point. Once yeah. you're once you're at the higher, the, you're getting in the in the upper uh, hundreds of thousands. Lean in heavily to what's working. Really improve the customer value optimization. But then it's what other ways can we add new channels of revenue? So what is that? If you're already advertising on Facebook, can you add Google? If you're already advertising on Google and Facebook, can you throw an Amazon listing in there and then put ads behind that Amazon listing? Yeah. Um, what other platforms allow advertising is what I'd be thinking about. And where would you be effective? You know, Snapchat is a really great place to be thinking about. And even now there's a new option for ads. Uh, I don't know if you want to spill the beans on that one, Aaron, that you told me about yesterday. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Like, so native advertising, you know, um, well, first off affiliate advertising, like Matt was mentioning, if you're not doing that and you're already at this level, introduce these new revenue channels. Now do them one at a time though, spend time and energy or do them many at a time, but put one person responsible for those different activities or one person for responsible for a handful of them. But there's some new opportunities with native advertising, uh, which has been a very challenge for a lot of CBD marketers because most native platforms, they go to the same websites that every other CBD marketer is advertising on. Thus, they're all seeing the same ads on a cannabis website, but it's not, so it's not very relevant. Um, but there's a company called AdRoll, who is very well known in the native space for just direct-to-consumer and e-commerce companies in general. They have recently, as of maybe a month ago at the most, maybe two weeks ago, uh, they have announced that they're going to allow CBD advertising for a very select group of people. If you're looking for a way to expand advertising in an easy way that you don't have to go through any rigmarole, ad roll. Give them a call. I think it's $2,000 minimum budget um, and it's worth a shot. Um, it doesn't always, I, in my experience, I find it have the best success with native advertising when I'm already converting well on uh, other platforms, but it's uh, definitely something to consider. Um, you know, one sense. other thing we didn't mention was SEO. You know, if you, you can... Yeah. If you have the budget, invest in SEO early as a business. So that way, by the time you're starting to scale up, you start to reap the benefits three to six months down the line. And another thing is you just got to get lucky and have timing too. It's part of it like that I noticed too. Like we had a lot of luck when we hit that 50, over 15 million a year. Um, so that's what it is. And um, and that's what we're going to leave you with today, people. And we'll be, we'll be back next week and Absolutely. see you then. And have a great day, everybody. Thank you guys. Invest in your team. Look for the right players. And uh, I'm excited to, we're excited to be there and help you along the way of uh, you scaling your businesses from uh, zero to seven figures. So yeah, see and you join soon. us in the CBD Business Accelerator, cbdbusinessaccelerator.com. See you there, people. Bye. Everybody. Bye, guys.